Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. They have solutions for connecting wires to other wires, terminals, or anything else you can think of. There will be a short video explaining more about them at the end. Now enjoy our regular video. Hey, what's happening guys? Today, we are going to talk about this little device right here. And what it is, is a PTC thermistor. That is positive temperature coefficient. And if you look down here at the symbol, you have our basic resistor box with a vertical line to the top of the box and then a diagonal line through it. And it is marked plus T for positive temperature coefficient. There is also a negative temperature coefficient that will be marked minus T. And what these guys are, are special resistors that are able to act as a resettable current fuse. So, in a lot of ways, they are like a standard resistor. They are non-polarized, they have two leads, and they resist the flow of current. But what is different about these is that when the PTC gets hot, its resistance is going to climb, and when it cools down, it's going to reset itself back to normal. With the resistor, that's probably not going to happen. If it gets too hot, it's just going to burn up. Let's uh, take an example of this, and I will show you real quick, because it's really easy to understand once you've seen it in action. All right, turn the light on here. So hopefully you guys can see a little better. And we'll put our PTC right here into the little clips on this meter and you can see we have a resistance of about 1.3 K but the way this works now remember when it gets hot boom just like that the temperature rises up into the mega ohm range and then it goes crazy while it is cooling down and resetting. And what's happening is it's reached a temperature called the Curie temperature. And when it reaches that point with the PTC, the resistance just goes exponentially through the roof. Now remember, all resistors work in the same way. They have a material within, within them that is a semi-insulator. and they take the current that passes through them and they dissipate it as heat. So here is a standard, this is supposed to be a 1.5K, you can see it's a little off there. Now as we heat this, you notice the resistance pretty much remains the same until at some point, you know, eventually, this thing is going to become so hot that is simply going to not work anymore in there and it just it just broke now you're not going to get flame level temperature in your circuit and if you do well you have other problems but you get the idea now see this one's had time to cool and as we hook it back up we're back to 1.3k so again this is a positive temperature coefficient thermistor they are also available in negative coefficient thermistors, and they're generally used to limit inrush current. So let's say, let's make a, uh, we'll get a circuit example here so you can understand a little bit better about how this kind of thing might work. So let's say we have an AC source. We're going to have our two legs from the AC source. We'll come over here to a switch. And from the switch, we'll go through a current fuse. And from the current fuse, we will go to the positive temperature thermistor. And out of that, we will go into some manner 
of the Fool Bridge rectifier. Whether it is for discrete diodes or an IC, it really doesn't matter. So we have AC in, and then we have plus and minus DC out of the rectifier. So we'll add a smoothing capacitor. And then, you know, let's say we need a, uh, DC to DC converter. And out of the DC to DC converter, finally we would go to our load. But you notice we have this positive temperature coefficient coming in off the uh, live of our AC through our current fuse before the bridge rectifier. Now what's going to happen with inrush current is when we first close this switch, the first thing that's going to happen in the circuit is we need to start charging this smoothing capacitor. And if it's, you know, say uh, 2200 microfarad uh, electrolytic smoothing capacitor, it can take quite a bit of current at first. So the current, we're going we're to make sure we fuse this high enough so that the inrush doesn't blow our current fuse. That current can start heating this up. And as it heats it up, if it's too much, well then this will go high, current, high resistance, and it will block the current flowing into the rest of the circuit. And the reason you want to do that is you want to protect your contacts, like in your switch, and you also want to protect things such as, you know, the life cycle of your smoothing capacitors, especially when you get into industrial things where the smoothing capacitors can be quite large and quite expensive, so you want to protect the rest of your circuit. And the positive temperature coefficient thermistor in place right there can do just that. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this short video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace. We've all been there, right? We've all spliced a set of wires together and either used some electrical tape or a wire nut or something to connect them together. There's always a better way. If you need them permanently connected, I suggest the solder stick, uh, solder connectors where you heat them up with a heat gun and they melt together. But if you need something a little less permanent, spade connectors. We have a male and a female connector which fit together uh, like so. You crimp those onto the ends of your wires and you, you look like you know what you're doing. And, have you ever come across something like this, where the wires have been stripped, focus, and just crushed underneath a screw to hold them in place? Well, time and temperature will cause those wires to move and flex and eventually come loose, which can definitely lead to a hazard. In that case, something like the solder stick ring connectors are just what the doctor ordered. Crimp these guys on your wire. They have them for all different size wires. Heat them up. This heat shrink will shrink down giving you a nice insulated connection to your wire that you can then put underneath that screw and have a nice professional looking solution. Solder stick. You can see their website right there. www.solderstick.com Check them out. See if they have a project or a product that works for you.